there, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about the five of the most successful businesses who pitched on Dragon's Den. But before we go on to that, if you end up liking this video, please like and subscribe, it helps us out a ton. Without any further ado, let's get back to the list. Essentia. Uh, my name is Jack Delaccio. I'm the uh, owner and founder of Essentia. Um, I, I started the company in 2006. Essentia founder Jack Delacayo initially saw the show as a publicity opportunity. I was in the office and our marketing guy popped his head in the door saying, I'm going to pitch you to be on Dragon's Den. I said, sure, any opportunity to talk about the brand is valuable to me. He says being on the show paid immediate dividends to the business. For years, I got people coming in and saying, I saw you on Dragon's Den. We can still tell when the episode runs as a rerun because of the spike in web traffic. Delacao is still friends with W. Brad Wilson, who gives him advice from time to time. Wilson is also a customer, Delacao says. He is buying mattresses from us. In turn, he's donated money to the Wilson's charitable fund. Delacao advises future pitchers to think about more than just the money when they walk into the den. He says, think about what else your business needs and about what the different dragons bring as a value add. If you get an offer from a dragon who brings the right experience, be willing to accept the lower valuation. The Essentia material back in 2003, when I had some people in the family who were struck by um, uh, some illnesses. Uh, can Sacks Apparel, sold for $50 million. Even though he initially left the den without a deal, Saks Apparel founder Trent Kish says that taking his men's underwear company on season 2 of Dragon's Den was one of the best decisions he ever made. For one thing, he received $50,000 as a winner of that season's Concrete Armchair Equity Dragon Contest, meaning that the den heads thought he had the best unfounded pitch of the season. For another, just being on the show gave him a massive boost in sales. The day after it aired, we did thirty dollars to $40,000 in sales, he says. At the time, we were usually doing one or two thousand per day. Kitch sold his majority stake in the underwear company in 2016 and has since invested in a winery and cannabis startup, Dosha. In 2018, he sold Dosha to Canopy Growth. Between his various endeavors, Kitch says that he's been able to parlay his armchair dragon contest winnings into close to a billion dollars in value. Not surprisingly, he encourages every entrepreneur to try their luck in the den. Absolutely everyone should try and make their company or product or service on the show, he says. If nothing else, you get to put it in front of hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people. This is a different concept than what you're used to. Right. I, I, it was new to me. Let me just ask you this question. When... When Fix Me Stick co-founders Martin Algaia and Corey Fallon pitched in Season 8, the business was still pretty small. Algaia said, if we sold 10 units a day, that's only $600 in sales, we'd high-five across the desks. In five and a half years since then, the business has grown massively. The computer virus repair stick is now in every major retailer in North America and is selling in the UK, France, and via shopping channel QVC. The pair say their appearance on Dragon's Den has been instrumental in their growth but has also helped in other unexpected ways. When we started out, we couldn't get the USB manufacturers to take us seriously, so we wound up buying really low quality USB sticks off the internet. At one point, we were even throwing a quarter of them out. Having a dragon in their corner allowed them to get into meetings with big manufacturers, who agreed to give them a better price on superior sticks. Dragon Den's fans, aka Den heads, have become some of the brand's most loyal customers. We operate on a subscription business and every January we get a wave of renewals because that's when the episode airs at Ballon. We believe it's time our underwear did more. That's why we're changing it for good. I'm Joanna and I'm here to talk to you about Nixwear. Nixwear founder and CEO Joanna Griffiths admits she went on the Dragon's Den really early in her entrepreneurship journey, but she handled the Dragons like a pro, becoming one of the few pitchers to leave with more money and a higher valuation than she initially asked for. I counteroffered successfully negotiated to get a larger sum, she says, and a lot of people told me they thought that was pretty awesome. 
She says in addition to money and exposure, going into the den made her more confident in her skills as an entrepreneur. As a business owner, you second guess yourself a lot, she says. You wonder, do I really have what it takes to do this? Getting an offer from four to five dragons and being able to answer every question they asked, it was really positive and empowering. Since going onto the show in season nine, she's coached several other entrepreneurs who are looking to pitch to the dragons. Her advice, know your numbers. They're always worried about what their presentation is going to look like or what their opening monologue is going to be. And I say, you can wing that, but you need to know your sales and gross revenue and margins. They're called dragons for a reason. Multitasking underwear. ND company sold for $89 million. Uh, is our poly stretch cover. Um, that mixed with the with the gel foam we've got on the on the top layer. We really try to think about When Mike Geddes and his business partner Hasish Nafwani brought their mattress company, ND, to the den in season twelve, they did it because it seemed so on brand. Our identity was a Canadian brand and we liked the show, says Geddes. We like the Dragons Den had been an institution of Canadian entrepreneurship for some time now. He says that being on the show allowed him to stay connected with the customers in a new way. We still get customers coming up to us talking about how they saw us on the show, he says. I think the way the show is set up, the audience is kind of on your side and rooting for you. Ganesh has one piece of major advice for would-be pitchers. Practice. Practice your pitch, he says. We went over ours ten times before we went on. That way, you'll be walking into the den and when the nerves hit you, you'll be ready to fire. Try to think about keeping the sleeper cool. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more videos of your favorite shows are coming soon. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.